وَنُنَزِّلُ مِنَ الْقُرْآنِ مَا هُوَ شِفَاءٌ وَرَحْمَةٌ لِلْمُؤْمِنِينَ Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. My beloved brothers and sisters, in verse number 110 of Surah Al-Baqarah, Allah tells us to establish our prayer, to give charities to the poor. And then Allah says, Whatever you have spent in the cause of goodness, in the cause of Allah, whatever goodness you've spent, you will definitely see the reward of it in a better way from Allah. So let's read the verse. وَأَقِيمُوا الصَّلَاةَ وَآتُوا الزَّكَاةَ وَمَا تُقَدِّمُوا لِأَنفُسِكُمْ مِنْ خَيْرٍ تَجِدُوهُ عِنْدَ اللَّهِ Allah says, establish your prayer and give alms to the poor. Give your zakah, give your charities. And Allah says, whatever you have put forth for yourself, you will find it with Allah. Indeed, he knows everything. He sees everything that is done. Now, why I've highlighted this verse in this series is because many times we do things and It's only the hope in the mercy and acceptance of Allah that would keep us going. And Allah will show you the goodness in this world and the next. When you spend, Allah will spend on you. You know the famous hadith, Anfiq ya ibn Adama, unfiq alayk. You know, spend, O oh son of Adam, I will spend on you. It's amazing. And so Allah says, when you spend, I'll give you more. If you haven't spent and you're miserly, your wealth will be depleted. So when you do something for Allah, Allah will recompense you in this world and the next. Don't forget that. It's impossible for Allah not to give you a reward. Your prayer, you get a reward for in this world and the next. Your charities to the poor, you get a reward for in this world and the next. All of that is multiplied tenfold, hundredfold, two hundredfold, seven hundredfold, so much more, subhanallah. Allah will multiply it and he says, you will see it with Allah, subhanahu wa ta'ala. So nothing is wasted for as long as you continue and you're dedicated uh, in the path of Allah, subhanahu wa ta'ala. Then he tells us, بَلَا مَنْ أَسْلَمَ وَجُهَهُ لِلَّهِ وَهُوَ مُحْسِنْ فَلَهُ أَجْرُهُ عِنْدَ رَبِّهِ وَلَا خَوْفٌ عَلَيْهِمْ وَلَا هُمْ يَحْزَنُونَ You know, I don't want fear and I don't want to be sad. How can I achieve that? Allah says, well, those who believe, those who submit, Balaman Aslama, Aslama is a person who's a Muslim. Muslim means the one who submits to the instruction of Allah. So Allah says, those, the one who has submitted uh, his face towards Allah, which means he has submitted totally to Allah, Lillah, and he does good. He's a muhsin. Muhsin encompasses all All forms of good. So he does good. وَهُوَ muhsin. He worships Allah in the best and highest possible way. فَلَهُ أَجْرُهُ عِنْدَ رَبِّهِ You do the best that you can. Allah says such a person will achieve his reward with Allah. And he will have no need to be saddened or to fear. No need to fear and no need to be sad. He will not be sad and he will not fear. So when you worship Allah and you are convinced that Allah alone will harm or will allow harm or benefit, then you understand this relationship and it becomes so beautiful that Allah Almighty is pleased with us. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us uh, from his pleasure. You know, nothing is impossible for Allah. Nothing is impossible for Allah. He just has to say be and it is. And this is why in verse number 117 of Surah Al-Baqarah, Allah says, Badi'u samawati wal ard. He, who, who is Allah? He is the creator of the skies and the earth, the heavens and the earth. He is the creator. Badi'u samawati wal ard. He created them from nothing, from nothing. What did he say? إِذَا قَضَى أَمْرًا فَإِنَّمَا يَقُولُ لَهُ كُنْ فَيَكُنْ Whenever he has decided something, he just says be and it is. So you can never ever 
lose hope in the mercy of Allah. If he created things from nothing, he will definitely create goodness for you and I. But he wants you to be bear patience at times because he knows it's better for you. When a child goes to school, they have to work hard. They have to write the examinations. They have to follow the rules. All of that is for them to pass. In fact, their parents will cheer them on to say, work hard because we want to see you pass. So it doesn't mean that your parents dislike you or that there's something wrong with the school. Same applies. It doesn't mean Allah dislikes you or there's something wrong with Islam. These are rules, regulations, and Allah is instructing us, encouraging us to continue to fulfill because he wants to see us graduate in a beautiful way so that we achieve Jannatul Firdaus. We achieve ultimate eternal goodness. The world, the life of this world is so temporary, it's only a few years. So Allah Almighty definitely wants us to continue beyond this. And Allah wants us to achieve the everlasting bliss. A small inconvenience is definitely worth it. When you are renovating your house, when you're rebuilding a place, when you're repositioning your office or something, there will be days of inconvenience for long-term convenience. You're setting up a new store or you're doing whatever you have to in order to be able to live in a better place. One day you'll have the official opening, mashallah. And then you're so happy because you're in your new place. What about the inconvenience, the interim of it? It took you a year to build this place, but you're going to live in there for 20 years. The same applies to our lives. We are in a building phase of the eternal life. Don't forget, have hope. Your heart will heal once you realize convincingly that that's the case. When you're, once, you're, uh, you know, once you have this conviction within you, subhanallah, I'm in a phase of building. Building what? My hereafter. That's why I'm here. Life is too short. The 70, 80 years that I'm going to get here, so many people, really good people have passed on and some bad people have passed on as well. Life was so short. It cannot be that such a sophisticated creature is there only for 70 years. It should be much longer. But Allah says it will be forever. This is just a phase. It's called the life of this world. But the next is everlasting. So Allah says have hope and you must Develop that hope with a lot of conviction. It will automatically heal your heart. Look at Ibrahim alayhi salam. He called out to Allah. Imagine where he was. He was in the desert with his wife and child. And he called out to Allah. And he says, O oh Allah. Verse number 126 of Surah Al-Baqarah. وَإِذْ قَالَ إِبْرَاهِيمُ Remember the time when the Prophet Abraham, may peace be upon him, called out to his Lord saying, O oh my Lord, make this town or a, a, a safe place, secure this town and grant its inhabitants with uh, lots of produce, different types of fruit and vegetable and so on. Look at Makkah today. He was speaking about Makkah. It was barren. Nothing grew there. It didn't even have water at one stage prior to this. And Allah caused the gushing spring of Zamzam to flow. Up to this day it is flowing and Allah caused all fruits and vegetables from across the globe to come there. So never lose hope. When you call out to Allah, if you don't see the fruit of it immediately, you may see it long term. And if you didn't see it in your life, you would see it later on. And part of the hope and healing is to be able to pray for those whom you haven't seen from your progeny and the progeny of others. Subhanallah. Imagine the amount of hope Ibrahim alayhi salam had when he's praying for his offspring. He prayed for us, literally, by asking Allah to make this place beautiful. In fact, he says, O oh Allah... I pray that you make the two of us submitters and even from our families. I'd like to see my family and my progeny submitters unto you. How many of us pray for our progenies? How many of us pray for our children? Oh Allah, grant me goodness and my children and my progeny, my offspring. Oh Allah, keep them on steadfast on faith. I am being strong with my prayer. Keep my children also strong with their prayer. That's the, that's the dua of Ibrahim alayhi salam. He also goes out to say, Oh Allah, let the hearts of the people incline towards Makkah. My heart's inclined towards Makkah. I can't wait to go back to Makkah to Mukarrama once all these restrictions are lifted, inshallah. And the same applies to most of us. If I were to tell you, let's go to Makkah. 
the majority of us, those who believe, will all say, let's go, mashallah. May Allah gather us in his obedience in this world and the next, and amin to that dua that I just made right now. So my brothers and sisters, this is something amazing. It's the gift of Allah. And that's why when he said, oh Allah, from my offspring, make prophets who will come and remind people to do good and remind them to stay away from bad, Allah gave him that dua. And all the prophets who came after the prophet Abraham were from his family. Whoa, a lot of hope in listening to these stories and in knowing what happened thereafter. So in my life also, I'm going to pray to Allah and I'm going to make sure that I have hope because the same Allah who responded to those duas will respond to mine and yours. أقول قولي هذا وصلى الله وسلم وبارك على نبينا محمد وننزل من القرآن ما هو شفاء ورحمة للمؤمنين 